Good morning. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to our Natural Health News live show, where I come to you every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time to talk to you a little bit about the current state of uh, viral affairs and news and information that will empower you and your families to be healthy and safe during this uh, crazy crisis that we find ourselves in. I am Dr. Melissa Gallagher. I'm a naturopathic physician. For all of you new joining or watching this on the replay, or just tuning in for the first time, welcome. I want to invite you to our natural health resource community. We come together here as a collective being to support and encourage and empower each other. So this is a community that chats amongst themselves in the little chat box. So for all of you joining, um, I love learning where you are tuning in from. Even on the replay, we have a very broad international community. So I always love to know, tell me where you're tuning in from and as well as any questions. Today, specifically, we're gonna talk about your immune system and the virus, and specifically a hyper-inflammatory, hyper-immuno response that we are seeing in a quantity, a percentage of cases that are being hospitalized, ventilated, intubated because of this virus. So very excited to share with you um, something that we've known since the late, uh, 1990s, um, really early 2000s have been studying this at, at some detail. It still hasn't become more mainstream, but we're going to talk about the cyto or the not cyto, um, <laughs> the cytokine storm and what that means in terms of your immune system. We're going to talk about folks that might be vulnerable to this type of storm, as well as conditions and health issues. Uh, underlying health diseases, diagnoses you might have that would potentially put you in a situation of experiencing a cytokine storm. And then also how to manage and reduce those symptoms of potentially an overreactivity of your immune response. And I'm going to dig a little bit more into some research. Um, but most importantly, today we come together first this is two parts, our live show. So I just want to put out the format for everybody expectation wise. First part, we're going to go over a lot of news. I try to be as empowering and encouraging and grab a lot of the pertinent news, then also positive news. And then we go into the topic at hand, which in this case will be um, explaining the cytokine storm syndrome, uh, CSS, as we call it. And also I have solutions for that. So I'm very excited to dig into today's um, uh, live show. So welcome all of you. I am sporting my social distancing expert shirt. So if you guys are curious about grabbing one of these, this happens to be in our brand colors. I basically match our wall today. Um, this is brought to you by an Etsy store that I am supporting and would love and encourage you to support. Same with my, I'm doing my caffeine and quarantine, literally drinking caffeine this morning. So welcome all of you. Mm. So good. So I just first want to say I had a nightmare last night about people not wearing masks and getting too in my face. I had a dream I was back in Florida. And many of you who follow football, you know that the Tampa Bay Bucks just picked up um, Tom Brady and he's been doing all sorts of really great acts of kindness. Well, one of my favorite in my dreams, one of my favorite um, uh, local uh, sandwich shops. Um, I was in line with like, seemed like hundreds of other folks and nobody was social distancing and I was getting really irritated. And then I got up to where they make these like great grouper sandwiches. And the girl was saying, we keep getting calls from Tom Brady and just sell. And they, every time they call all these people come to our location, I kept getting irritated. And I went in my dream, I was very uh, disturbed by the fact that people weren't wearing masks. And um, I laugh because it literally was a nightmare. People were not distancing. They were breathing in my space. In my head, all I could see is, you know, all these reports I've shown you of like the, the distance that a sneeze or cough expands, you know, 23, 27 feet. My favorite um, gardens that I used to go to all the time just to like meditate. And I did my Kundalini yoga classes there. There are people there. They weren't adhering to this. I was getting really, really irritated. So that is now my official nightmare. <laughs> and I'm going to report some news. So um, 
I'll, I'll come to that at the end of our news because there's a, an actual news story that relates to that same irritation. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But um, anyway, we're at now the world has surpassed 2 million cases. So we we're definitely um, in, again, an incline up. The U.S. is um, at 644,000. Uh, we'll probably be at 675, probably by lunchtime. Um, I want to share some news. So Germany, just globally, I know we have folks from Denmark and folks from um, all over the world. Uh, globally, you know, countries who have been dealing with this are starting to look at how are they going to reopen? That's the big question. You know, you're hitting your peaks. Some areas, especially here in the U.S., we aren't even there yet. But um, Germany, for instance, has said that they're going to be slow to reopen. I'm monitoring Germany and their kind of guidelines because I was supposed to be going to Germany for six weeks to do a an extensive six week um, postdoctoral certification. It's a lymphatic, the only lymphatic hospital in the world is going to be working with the doctor there and learning uh, additional ways to support my lymphatic community and bring back what they are teaching in Germany. Um, it's a new program. She, the doctors opened, and this would be year number two. Well, Germany is. Um, they came out today saying they're going to slow, be slow to reopen. Schools might slowly start to reopen in May, but they have uh, deemed that there will not be any large gatherings of 50 or more until after uh, August 31st. So basically that, that just kills my, uh, my whole program. Um, it, and, you know, there would be potentially more than 50 of us, but included doctors and the patients and we do rounds. Uh, so Anyway, I'm kind of bummed about that, but that is an, an, an indicator that here in the US, we're gonna start to hear things like that. Um, New York now has um, is requiring that everybody wear masks when they're outside. So I've got links uh, for the mask. I still have it in the car from the other day. Um, but my friend Sarah is making masks. Um, the I, evidence is you want two layers, an insert. I'm gonna be doing a video because I actually have back here. I haven't cleaned them, so I'm not going to touch them, but um, I ha now have the filter, the five carbon filters. I have a children's version and the adult version I can show you. And I think I ordered probably way more than I should have, um, but we're going to disperse these to all of our, our family and friends and then our mail carrier and our people who work for us that are delivering all these things to our door. Um, but that's big because we are going to be needing to see people wearing masks. And that is something that I'm, I am feeling frustrated with, and it's manifesting in my dreams now. Um, and so let's just go into the news in Florida. So, um, you know, I was born in Georgia, but I grew up in Florida. So I feel like I'm a total Floridian. I went, you know, graduated elementary, middle and high school. I even graduated from undergrad at Florida State University. I'm a Floridian. So I get to say this and, and with no shame. Florida, we call it Florida because there's a lot of stupid things, stupid news stories that come out of Florida. So our Florida story uh, harkens back to my crazy nightmare last night, early this morning, about people not wearing masks. So there's an, a gentleman in Sebring named Robert. Robert's a 62-year-old gentleman, seemingly frustrated the fact at the fact that people are not adhering to the CDC requirements and guidelines that we should all be wearing masks to protect ourselves and each other. So he wrote a letter to Publix, which is one of the local, um, they're actually a Florida-based grocer that's now kind of moving up the north, the, the coast, east coast. So um, Robert wrote to Publix saying that um, if people did not start shopping with face masks, that he would... <laughs> It's not funny. It's just Florida um, that he would go in and shoot people. <laughs> so basically he um, wrote a letter saying that there would be, I mean, it's been a little bit blown out of proportion, but he literally did make um, a mass shooting claim that he would go in and shoot people in publics because they weren't wearing face masks. And he is in jail and his bond is $6,200. So Florida continues to always amaze me. With our fabulous stories, the governor has deemed the WWE an essential uh, business. That's the worldwide wrestling entertainment. You know, Hulk Hogan is a local to the Clearwater, Tampa area. So, you know, Florida. <laughs> 
So anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. Hopefully you get a little laugh. It's not funny, his, 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 what he wrote, but it's frustration. You know, the fact that nobody's really taking this seriously. I can, I feel him. I don't feel his threats. That's not okay. Gun violence and writing about violence is not okay. Um, but Felicia notates people are not wearing masks. It's just very frustrating. So um, let's dig into more, more news. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart on Instagram, screenshot this Instagram, share it with your community, hit the share button for all of you on YouTube. And if you are new, hit the follow subscribe button. Um, so you get more news here. Um, the farm belt, I wanna talk to you a little bit about the farm belt. These are states that um, the governors are not making any type of con, con I want to say conscious, but they're they're not making strides to limit social distancing, partially because their numbers were really low. But we're starting to see double digit in, incline or increases in their stats. So uh, states like Nebraska and Iowa are seeing 26, 30 percent increases. Um, we know that South Dakota there they've even since I reported, I think it was two days ago, I reported about the pork. Yeah, it was two days ago. I reported that, that we, um, there was this coming hot spot in, at the Smithfield plant in Sioux Falls. And initially, two days ago, it was 300 cases. Now they're over 644 cases. They are like 230% increase um, in a span of like two days. And they are now deemed the hot spot in the US right now. And their facility, some of these facilities like Nebraska, they're at max peak already. Um, what we're seeing now, and this will definitely impact us, um, if you are a meat eater, a conventional meat eater, um, there are, like uh, in Nebraska, there is the US, let's see, what is it? I can't even read my handwriting. Oh, the US beef plant. There are 28 cases uh, of the virus in a, a beef manufacturing plant or processing. So as, and Tyson Foods was another one, I believe that was in Iowa, that was hit with it. And we're gonna see more cases, partially because we don't have enough testing. Initially I reported, I think it was yesterday, I reported that 30%, there was a decrease of testing uh, from you know week to week. And that actually was incorrect. So I've been corrected. It's now, there was a decrease by 50%. So we didn't test, but half of what we had tested the week before. And that's a really, really big problem. Um, which poses additional problems because some of these states aren't getting enough testing. We don't know who has it. We don't even have the ability to quarantine people. And when we look at other countries that have done this in the right way and taken all the appropriate measures for a quick uh, turnaround, quick peak, and then being able to come back to normal, they had multiple measures in place. And in fact, the CDC there's been some leaked information. The CDC is working on a plan. Um, it is um, in direct, almost direct opposition to what the White House is pushing out in terms of um, getting things turned around quickly. And basically the CDC, uh, it has not been officially released. So I can't pull this document for you, but I've read what was released. And basically it's an identifying, there are multiple factors that we need to be testing. They want to test everyone that's symptomatic. They want to test everybody who is asymptomatic. They want to implement some sort of self-isolation process. We don't even have that where we're using hotels like quarantine people. Um, and then also to have all of our healthcare and all of our frontline workers being tested and multiple times tested multiply because you could test one week and be fine and then you get exposure. And so you, you, it, 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 what they've identified is that um, at our peak, we were at, testing at about 120,000 individuals per day. If we were to get to the level that other countries have been at that have been able to, to get this under control, we would need to be at 750,000 to a million tests a day. And it said there's major discrepancies because most of this is in the commercial industry, commercial labs. They don't even have the bandwidth. We don't have the materials, nor do they have the bandwidth to pump out that quantity of tests. That's really, really significant. And then they talked about, um, you know, it's a tug of war. So we've got stats and data, and then we've got some agendas and economic, political being what they are, you know, public safety, statistics, epidemiology, and data via testing and assessing best practices in this pandemic state, 
we're we're completely behind the eight ball. And so they even talked about surveillance data that we would need to be um, forthright with that. We would that's really the big way to limit outbreaks to be able to identify tracing, contact tracing. And this kind of I mentioned last week, this was done by um, Chicago or Illinois. This was based on two parties that were kind of epicenters for the outbreak that they've identified in Chicago. And then just the tracing of, of the well, you know, touch points of who all, you know, and there's a blend at church and then all of a sudden you have more outbreaks. Um, so, you know, if we were to bump up our testing to, you know, three quarters of a million to a million a day, they said that that might be where we could, and we'd have to be there for several weeks. Um, but then they talk about mitigation guidances and it, it, it's just way more comprehensive than just putting a date on the calendar. Um, oh, Sophie's baby six. Uh, she gave me a $5 super chat. Thank you. Mwah, I appreciate that. She says, appreciate the great information. Thanks doc. Um, so that's where we're kind of at. There's definitely a big tug of war. Um, I do want to make some notes here on the nursing home front, um, New Jersey, this is so terrible, friends. You're going to hear about it probably today. And if you tune out of the news, you'll hear it and then it'll be it'll be gone. But the nursing home community is getting really rocked hard. And um, I read late last night and then this morning I followed up on it. Um, the state, New Jersey's largest nursing home community, one facility, um, they are so overwhelmed, like the nursing homes, they have morgues, just like any, you know, they provide medical services. Most of it's like end of life and hospice and, and things like that. I've personally been in them for, you know, family members. I've also been a care provider for end of term end of care. Um, so I know how that goes. And I know they're very limited. They're often short staffed and it's just not, it's not like a medical facility. So this one particular home was so overloaded with the amount of deaths. Um, apparently, they've taken to disposing of the bodies in bizarre ways, and and I don't know the I, it's going. There will be an investigation. I'm just going to say that. Essentially, the police were tipped off late Monday that there was a body and a shed at this nursing home, and so they went in and and it had been moved, but essentially they uncovered 17 in total. Um, bodies that were uh, inside in a four uh, a morgue for four people. So they've sent sent a refrigerated truck. And, I mean, that is just an indicator of how overwhelmed these facilities are. Um, and then a lot of the family members, because of the, the lockdown, they're not able to get in. They're understaffed. People aren't even able to communicate with their loved ones. It's just a bad story all around. And this is just one case, but it is definitely. They had identified even workers have been, it's an epicenter in New, in New Jersey. Workers, I think it was like 44 workers in total amongst all of these facilities have tested positive. Um, and to that note, yesterday I reported there were, you know, we're starting to see the litigation, the lawsuits. Well, there was another lawsuit filed in uh, San Francisco against a nursing home facility there for negligence. And so, you know, there's definitely going to be that aspect that we see. Um, okay. So I also, you know, the news, the, the craziness and bizarre. So, um, I, and I follow some of my friends and, and, and past clients because I was in Florida, I had a lot of folks that would be, you know, snowbirds. And so Michigan, Maine, I follow up with a lot of them and, and I'm friends with them socially. So I started seeing some threads coming out yesterday and then read why they were talking about it. Apparently, Maine, a toilet paper mill went up in flames. <laughs> so, you know, we all have our toilet paper issues and a whole entire mill just went up just like cinders. So that was in uh, in Maine. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Troy. I don't know. Uh, but it definitely in Maine, a toilet paper mill went up in smoke. Um, kind of news of the crazy. So um, Pennsylvania has locked down, you know, their state. And they also closed all the alcohol, uh, you know, uh, stores. So, you know, here, like in Florida, they they serve al like alcohol. You can go to Publix and they have like a liquor store connected. Here in Georgia, they're totally connected. So people can't go wine and beer at a grocery store, but they can't. They have to go somewhere else for like sometimes wine and hard liquor. Well, every state's a little different. But Pennsylvania locked down 
they had a ban of being able to go and buy liquor. So what was happening is all these folks in Pennsylvania were crossing the border. They were going to West Virginia. They were going into New Jersey. They were going to all these other states. And so these states have literally had to ban Pennsylvanians from coming in and buying liquor. And apparently liquor sales are up by like 80 and 90 percent, some even higher. I guess beer sales were lower and some of the seltzer, spike seltzers, apparently those are high. So despite the trend that alcohol is not great for your immune system, there are a lot of people in lockdown feeling the need to, uh, <laughs> to, to go across the border. So that has been banned in Pennsylvania. Um, and that was kind of an interesting story. Now on to some happy, happy news. So I have two little tidbits of happiness. Um, there was a mother who um, was like near term pregnancy um, who was intubated with the virus and she gave birth. A, she did a vaginal delivery while intubated. Ah, isn't that amazing? And her baby's fine. She's off ventilation and she's recovering, but that's pretty spectacular and pretty amazing. So I think that is a testament to through hell and thunderstorms. We have rainbows and babies that come out. So that's pretty amazing. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to highlight that. And then also another happy story before we get into the, the meat of our topic today is that um, the Illinois Retired Teachers Association is set up throughout the state. Retirees, um, retired teachers who are feeling bored at home, they have um, set up some online connection where the teachers can tutor and mentor children who might be feeling like they're falling behind or their parents like us, we're both working and kids can then have a connection to a teacher. I think that's pretty spectacular. So that is the news. There was a lot of news to cover, um, but I swear Florida, it's F-L-O-R-I-D-U-H, Florida takes the cake for Robert our friend in Sebring upset with the mask, the lack of mask wearing. So anyway, just a note, please wear your mask, wear them when you get your mail, you walk your dog, you go, if you have to go grocery shopping or even pick something up with, you know, somebody loading up your trunk, sanitize your trunk, sanitize everything, wear gloves, glasses, protect yourself. Um, and, and two, if you are a frontliner and your company is not providing that, we need to have that called out. I think that is very important. Um, and if you see, like I did get a response back from Pikes, that nursery that I complained about, they were more, seemed like they were more concerned with the fact that they had to delay in my order than they were about safety. So I'll have to readdress that with them. But, um, it's important that we also take a stand at helping these individuals protect themselves. And I know a lot of people are scared of losing their jobs, so they don't want to say anything. But we as customers have the exact same onus from corporations to supply and support their employees in keeping them healthy and safe. And as we see this, look at the medical professions, these nursing homes, they have a, a high percentage of folks workers that have the virus, just like the um, the people that are living there. And this is highly contagious and we need to be very careful. Okay, so let's talk about um, cytokine storms or cytokine storm syndrome. This is nothing new. This is very, um, it's not as mainstream. A lot of you know medical doctors aren't like tuning into it per se but it's definitely getting a lot more press because of the virus and what we're seeing the virus really excites those storms. It really kicks off and initiates the storms. And basically the cytokine is a hyper inflammatory, hyper immune response. And it particularly affects people that we see with those underlying health conditions. So a lot of what I've talked about initially, and I, I have this, this is way back from like now almost three weeks ago where I talked about, you know, we had an assessment the first month here in the U.S. who all was being, you know, hospitalized and in the ICU and potentially under ventilation. A lot of them were, uh, there was kidney related disease, heart disease, diabetes, immunocompromised, lung disease. And then there was just a small category of like a blend. Well, underlying a lot of these conditions is autoimmunity 
And within autoimmunity, what they're now starting to assess, and they had been assessing this, this has been this, there is data that is out and I'll link to that, um, where we're seeing some of these storms happening, the cytokine storms happening in ICUs, and why there's a variance in terms of what's working, what isn't working, and how somebody can crash and go septic so fast. And so in fact, you know, we know this as a respiratory illness and the lungs tend to be, that's a very quick, easy place for the virus to hide out, massively multiply. That's the way it does. It, it, it you know, infiltrates with a little stinger. It puts DNA into our body. That DNA is supposed to multiply the cells and it starts growing. It does that in, its, in the fastest form in the lung and bronchial tissue. So that's why it has become this SARS type of, of condition where, it's an acute respiratory issue. Ah, oh, futuristic. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Appreciate it. Um, so <clears throat> with that, what we're seeing is um, those are the cases that do turn uh, fatal and they turn into, you know, folks that are coming in or even convalescing at home, like you're recovering, you're quarantining at home, and then all of a sudden, boom, things go down. And <clears throat> we're even seeing like New York has adjusted the cases based on presumed positive, because a lot of these people probably were having cytokine storms at home and the autoimmune function, the immune connection is great. So I wanna break down a little bit about what a cytokine storm is. So essentially we have our immune system, there's two parts to it. We have what we call the innate immune system. It's just a natural response. So let's say like yesterday, we were out, we have a huge pile of mulch in our front yard from our neighbors who are cutting down their tree up the other day. It is insane pollen season and there are pine trees that were cut down. So as we're taking the mulch and we're carrying it to our flower beds, not it, not touching our, our house because of the, the termites and whatnot, but we're, we're spreading it. Well, as we're spreading it, I'm just getting infiltrated with pollen. So my innate immune response to that, just like yours would be, Traditionally, in a, in a normal, healthy body that's that that just responds in a natural, innate way, is I get a little puffiness, a little itchiness. Like sometimes I wake up in the morning and I've got like crustiness. Maybe my sinuses are a little congested. Normal response. I uh, scratch myself and I have like a little thorn uh, that, that came in through the glove and it's a little red and puffy. That's an innate immune response. My body's like, okay, there's a thorn or pollen and it has a gentle, mild reaction. There's no activation of a deeper immune response. There's, it's not necessary. It's just the, you know, more tears. I get it out. We're all good. I do my natural process and we're fine. Then <clears throat> there's a deeper um, immune system and we call it our active immune system. That is the immune system that responds when we get a common cold. We have a viral, bacterial infection, any type of overwhelming response. Sometimes it can be an overwhelming response to a surgery or, and many of you have had surgeries, you know, sometimes there are post-operative difficulties. That can be that active immune response. Um, and, and sometimes a hematoma at a surgical site can be an active immune response. So that second stage is what triggers certain immune cells, lymph, lymphocytes, cytokines to start to respond. So we have all these different immune cells that get signaled. And again, our brain, our central nervous system, our little CPU computer sending all these signals, it's reading and assessing what's happening in our body. And it sends signals to manufacture. Sometimes it's in the bone marrow, the spleen, if you have a spleen, and then it triggers, you know, the lymph nodes, which by the way, you don't just have lymph nodes up here. We have anywhere from 800 to 1500 lymph nodes throughout our body. They're, you know, kind of end down here at our wrist, end at our ankles and, and exist all over our body and our head. Uh, they touch every organ, every gland, they're all over. Those get invigorated by and activated by our active immune system, that immune response. So what happens is in one of these immune responses, our T cells get activated and that's normal. The T cells are kind of like, they're like the ninja cells and they're kind of like the army rangers. So they're like the special forces, they go in and they are built to kill, to terminate any of the invaders. So they go in and they, they're going in 
actually will activate cytokines. So they're kind of scavengering triggers to the immune response that something's happening. And then it engages more cells, other cells, um, natural killing cells, it activates white blood cells, it activates lymphocytes, it, all those. Um, so what happens is that is a normal response, but there's sometimes a little miscommunication, a little hardwiring disconnect. And the big question is that I have always had as I've learned more and continue to learn more about this is that I wonder if some of the disconnect that some people have is, is almost a genetic defect. And I, I haven't seen anything that has said so or ruled it out or even analyzed it, but it seems very similar to how like when folks have MTHFR gene defects, it just, some people are more prone to this and others are not. Um, but these T cells, they be, they become cytotoxic T cells and they're meant, that's that whole hunt and kill. So they're in to kill and kill all these cells. Well, as the immune system gets triggered and, and in the viral, this virus that we're talking about, the rate of acceleration, the DNA multiplication of the virus itself, what we're seeing is it's putting a lot of strain. It's almost like the hospital strain of the cases that's happening inside the body. It's overwhelming. And it's overwhelming these T cells where they just start firing on everything. So it's like, you know, um, what is the term? Like when you shoot your own friendly fire, it's just taken out everything and it attacks the good cells and the bad cells. And what happens is that good cell attack, just it just goes rogue and it turns on itself. What we're seeing, that's what we call a cytokine storm. And it's very similar to a thyroid storm. It gets triggered and it gets triggered by the overwhelming amount of viral activity. So partly it's the virus. I have a feeling that there's some other aspect, maybe a gene element too. I'm just hypothesizing. Don't quote me on that. Um, but also the other thing too is what we find is folks that already have autoimmunity. So you already have an autoimmune disorder, one or multiple, it really turns that on. Like those, those immune cells, they're already like, okay, we're fighting. Ah, and then they just go nuts. And so what, what they've seen and some of the reports that I've read, and actually one of them, this goes back to a more original abstract about the cytokines. Um, and, and the studies of how to reduce this. Um, but what happens is that overwhelming volume of cytokines, it starts to shut down organs. So people have organ failure, not from the virus, but from the immune, that active immune response. So in fact, the active immune system has gone rogue. It literally is just firing on all organ tissue or all glandular tissue regardless. So that is where we see some of those blends in the kind of complicated, bizarre situations where you know people say, oh, they looked fine. Well, they may have had some kind of pre-existing condition or autoimmunity that when this virus got in the body, it triggered, it really heightened up that, that uh, the auto hyper inflammatory state, the hyper immune response, the hyper cytotoxin um, cytokine toxin experience. So that's what, that's what I want to kind of highlight today. Um, because there are, there are several things at play. Um, first they're starting to assess, and this is not any standard protocol because again, frontliners are just, they're in, they're in the trenches, but from afar, they're starting to look at, okay, what have we been doing? And are there tests that can be run? inexpensive tests that insurance, you know, would, would happily cover, um, CBC panels and other tests that we can identify is a cyto cytokine storm an underlying factor. So as people are coming in, can they run these tests? The challenge is like in New York, a lot of people are expiring on their way to the hospital. A lot of them haven't even tested positive. So there's really, that's where we go back. We need the testing. We need, we need more information and more time to be able to articulate these types of cases. So this is resonating, give me a thumbs up. I'm gonna drill into some of the tests that could be run in an existing state. Um, and even for any of you who might have these, and I'll, I'll also dig into some, of, I've got a whole list of 
autoimmunity and health conditions, these underlying health conditions, that if you have them and you have doctor's appointments or you've got virtual stuff, there's a way for us to get you tested on some of these basic tests, then you would have a better, you'd be better armed and dangerous, at least with some information, and then your doctors can respond appropriately. So for instance, we can identify and standard tests when you go into the hospital, um, you know, hyperinflammatory state. So we would see an increase in elevation in ferritin. So that's your blood iron levels. We'd see a decrease in your platelet levels. Okay. So that would be one. The H score or HS score, that would be another um, test that would be run. We might see low um, uh, lymphocytes. So you might actually have, um, it's, it's almost like a low inefficient lymphocyte production because the majority of the body is producing these T cells and not the lymphocytes. Um, and the other thing too, is they've identified that testing your liver enzymes, the AST, ALT, um, that the liver actually does not like this whole cytokine storm. And because of it, it ends up elevating, the liver has a response. So the liver has an elevated uh, enzyme reactivity, ALT and AST, so you can have those tested. Um, but at the, at the wrapped up in all of this whole cytokine, there's an actual single protein that they evaluate. And the protein is HMGB1. And it is, um, it's an interesting protein. It's a protein that gets turned on by the overwhelm. And that when it gets turned on, that then creates this overwhelming response of these T cells, these cytokines just get kicked up. And when HMGB1 is on, when it's on go mode, we have an overwhelming amount of inflammatory, uh, the, the inflammatory markers are overwhelming and the body is literally, that's the cytokine storm. So HMGB1, that protein is the protein we want to address. And there are actually, there's been science. So I'm very excited to report that we have some findings. Some of this is actually going to be coming from life extensions. Um, and they do a lot of labs and test, um, third party testing. And then a lot of times they will end up making blends that are, that are put all of those into one combination. Um, but what they've tested is if we can lower HMGB1 levels in the body, we can lower the cytokine storm syndrome. And we can also address this mass autoimmune response. We can lower this active immune response in the body. So the autoimmune response that we see that triggering this protein triggers these cytokines, that then triggers the sepsis, organ failure, the you know shutdown of not just the lungs, like what they've, one of the articles I read was that a lot of these doctors are expecting to see all lung disorders. That's not what they're seeing. They're seeing folks that have come in, they've had a heart attack, but they, it was from, they've tested positive. Like there's been a cardiovascular incident, but underlying is the overwhelming inflammation. They had increases in the inflammatory response and it caused a, a heart attack or, uh, gl you know, glandular organ failure. So the, let me list, because we do automatically, we already know this, there are certain uh, underlying health conditions here that automatically have higher than normal HMGB1 levels. And they're going to resonate because I've been talking a lot about them, and they are all of the underlying health conditions specific to this, this uh, particular virus. They're the ones that people are saying, be aware of and be very careful for. Um, so Alyssa says, when I was looking for some hope out of knowledge is powerful. Yes. Um, okay. So um, asthma is one. So, and, and asthma can be a recurring situation and the degree of intensity, like I have a good friend, actually, she's one of our bridesmaids. And um, she is, sorry, I just gotta get a little bit more comfortable. My leg is bothering me. Um, she has developed asthma that's so severe, she has a reaction to shellfish. And in all of our wedding planning, we had to be very cautious of 
any type of exposure to shellfish in a molecular form. Like if it's free floating in a room, she can't be in there or she'd have this cytokine related response. And it can be very, it can be deadly. So asthma, COPD, diabetes, arterial sclerosis. A lot of times we wouldn't put that with that. Cancer, inflammatory bowel disorder. So Crohn's, colitis, um, autoimmune disorder. So that that's kind of a down moment, but definitely uh, lupus, MS, RA, Sjogren's disease, diabetes, Hashimoto's. Those are all in the autoimmune, autoimmune category. Obesity is in that. Neurodegenerative disorder, disorders or any type of neuro uh, imbalance, parasympathetic, sympathetic system meltdowns that falls in that category. Um, viral infections. So the Epstein-Barr could be a component that we could look at here. And then any type of trauma, traumatic like brain injury, uh, lung related trauma, in, and that would include radiation of the lung, then also um, uh, bone, bone related trauma. So either bone cancer, previous bone cancer, broken bone, radiated bone. Um, so that is huge. Um, all right. So Marietta, what, what about people with EBV high IgG? Um, yeah. So that I have videos on Epstein-Barr virus, and this is just globally kind of covering all of that, but viral infections like Epstein-Barr and the pox viruses would fall into this category, depending on the degree of that infiltration. But Epstein-Barr is one of these ones that's very challenging. And Patsy Gregory, very important to get chemicals out of the house with asthma. Uh, yes, but that's just not it. It's not just chemicals. There's just a lot more. It's way deeper than just eliminating chemicals, but she is totally right. You want to limit the factors of inflammatory um, uh, things that cause inflammation. Um, and I, that's why I love using UV, UV air filters. Um, I'm going to be highlighting one on my uh, YouTube channel that I adore, that is very powerful. And then also, you know, clean, like Brian and I were getting even further into the, our home remodel because <laughs> we have a lot of time to plan. We're not having anybody do this until everything's over, um, which is probably good because we might be able to get a little bit more bang for our buck with some of the um, economics of some of these places, like the, the flooring we were looking at. We're trying to go as economical, but also eco-friendly and as toxic free as we can. Um, and despite what you would think, like cork and bamboo are actually very toxic because of a lot of the chemicals in them. Um, so what we see with the HMGB1 is that we will see an, a course, uh, like the way they treat these, these folks now, and we're probably going to see this potentially, I'd, I'd say let's give it like six to nine months, but we'll probably see kind of a protocol for cases that might fall into this. Not everybody with the virus is going to fall in this case, but you know, there's a dose of steroids, so anti-inflammatories. There are going to be uh, doses that address some of the viral burden that might be folks uh, are dealing with. Then we might see some protein blocking of the HMGB1. Um, so, sorry, my allergies. The outside <laughs> is completely, we spent like eight hours outside yesterday. Um, so we might see more specific kind of um, background uh, and protocols come through for this virus itself. But I want to talk to you about, because you know I'm all natural, I want to talk to you about two proven, uh, studied, I can't say extensively, but they've definitely been studied in all the right ways. Um, so it's HM, HM, M like Mary, HMGB1. Um, the two natural uh, compounds that have been studied individually and then collectively are mung bean seed coat. Okay. So a lot of times people are familiar with mung bean and, you know, I lived, I lived abroad. I lived in Japan for a year and then I actually spent time in China, Nepal and India and Thailand. So I've had a lot of exposure to mung bean and I like it. I like to eat it. And it's consumed a lot in uh, a lot of the cultural dis dishes, but mung bean coat, mung bean seed coat is a particular form format. 
and then green tea. So green tea extract that has been studied extensively um, in terms of being able to help um, naturally manage that inflammatory auto or immune system auto inflammatory condition. So it's almost as if the cytokine storm is its own auto inflammatory issue. But instead of an auto inflammatory condition of a gland, it is an auto inflammatory condition of your immune, your active immune system. So they have identified that these, these are two flavonoids. So they kind of fall into the category of a flavonoid. The flavonoids themselves are very powerful at um, delivering a particular type of compound. And we, we minimize the name of the compound and it's EGCG. So EGCG. Um, they are, they have, um, properties to actually modulate the, that protein. So HMGB1 is the protein that triggers, it turns on the cytokine storm. This property, this particular compound that we find in the, the seed coat. So literally, and I don't have any seeds here, but you know, the outer shell of a seed, uh, the mung bean, the outer shell is very powerful and potent in this particular compound. This compound is also, we find that in green tea. It has the, the ability to modulate that immune reaction. So somehow, some way, it, it I don't want to say it blocks, but it modulates, it regulates that HMGB1 protein. That protein helps us control these inflammatory cytokines. So the cytokines are in great abundance. We can actually see when we take the mung bean coat, seed coat, and green tea, we get an extensive amount of the E, E, G, E, G, C, G. <laughs> I've got a lot of abbreviations in there. Um, but this is a really powerful way at supporting your body's natural immune, active immune response. So it's not a, an overwhelming response. And there, there, this is very hard to find. I will tell you that this is not going to be readily available everywhere just because of the nature of these particular compounds. But I do have in the description for YouTube, my full script store, we do have the life extension. It's called Cytokine Suppress and it has the EGCG. And let me see if I can pull up the dosage. So uh, let's see. Okay, so it has 240 milligrams of the mung bean extract. So this particular coating, the seed coat, and it divides it out into two types, two, two elements. It's uh, vetixin and isovetixin. I think I'm saying that right. And then the EGCG, that's from the, the green tea, that's 300 milligrams. So we have 240 milligrams of this, the seed coat from the mung bean extract, and then 300 milligrams of the EGCG. That, they often recommend one, to, you know, capsule a day for just a normal kind of condition. So like normal autoimmune dysfunction, asthma, for me, I work individually with a lot of folks, so I might put somebody on a little bit more than that, kind of depending on their labs. The lab values are obviously the best way to kind of assess um, how much to take, but it does really help support and minimize that likelihood that that cytokine response is something you automatically deal with. And is this resonating with any of you in terms of do you feel like if you've got asthma, COPD, Hashimoto's, or any of these items, Sjogren's, RA, MS, uh, rheumat you know, the diabetes, cancer, neurological, um, or neurodegenerative challenges, does that feel, do you feel like you have experienced an overwhelming cytokine response before in your body. Now, let me let me tell you about something else. And this is something I feel like I need to also, I need to do a little bit more digging, but I ran across this several times and I wanna have this be a separate kind of video here for our live. But one of the things that I found was that one of the byproducts, one of the symptoms also that we find in these um, 
cytotox T cells. So these are these T cells in mass abundance, the cytokine response. It's more common for folks to have bleeding, excessive bleeding, or bleeding disorders or blood clots. So, and, and I, I work, many of you may or may not know this, but I do a lot of post-surgical healing work. I do lymphatic work for basically any type of post-surgical case, but my main specialty are post-cancer, it, during cancer treatments, post-cancer, um, surgeries, elective surgeries, facelifts, tummy tucks, uh, Brazilian butt lifts, BBLs. <laughs> That's a, like a whole nother story. But I also do knees, hip replacements, uh, you know, elective, elective and, and non-elective surgeries. And my post-surgical healing, there are a lot of cases I have come across and worked with that have had bizarre healing issues, blood clotting, particularly some of even my professional athletes have had this condition. And when I look back at like their family history and I look at um, their own healing process, that surgery, that trauma triggers the cytokine response. And so it's not uncommon for folks to have a pulmonary embolism or some sort of embolism or deep vein thrombosis. So a blood clotting abnormality can very be can very well be an indicator your regular physicians aren't going to pick up that that's that that's a potential symptom a potential connection. Okay, so Ramona, hi Ramona, she says I have a history of bad infections after medical procedures, diabetic and Hashimoto's. Yeah, so that would be indicative for sure. Uh, let's see, we've got other comments here. Uh, how do you recommend using the supplement? I have Hashimoto's. Absolutely. So for sure, anybody with asthma, COPD, arterial sclerosis, any of the autoimmune categories, and this would even fall into my adrenal autoimmune. And that's something that nobody really talks about or tests for. Um, but for sure, uh, cancer would be another one. Um, anybody with extreme or extensive obesity, um, that is also potentially connected, like my lipedema patients, for sure, I'd put them on this. Um, and viral infections, extensive viral infections, and then any of those traumas, surgical, bone, lung, um, very, I think it would be very powerful. Okay, so John says, I was, I have Sjogren's, um, tested okay for Plaquenil, the genetic name, generic name, started meds within two days, almost went blind. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, um, there's definitely mung beans are great and we're actually seeing mung bean fruit as a flavoring. Um, so I think that's, you know, particularly in some of the diabetic products. Um, I think that is very, very good. Um, yeah. So always with any type of supplementation, you always want to kind of chalk with, if folks are on medications, I have to kind of give this, this um, clause, but, you know, always check with your physician, your medical provider and your pharmacist about any type of contraindications with green tea extract. That's pretty, pretty generic. You know, people drink green tea all the time, but there are some conditions where they will say to avoid that. <clears throat> and then also um, folks that might be on some of the um, blood pressure medication, you just want to make sure that there are not any con any contraindicators. But the good news is, you know, like with this one, again, this is one we don't recommend for pregnant pregnancy or lactating individuals. Um, this particular product that Life Extension has, it's vegetarian, it's vegan, um, but it's definitely worth testing out if you feel like you fall in that category. Oh, futuristic, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I saw that. Oh, you did it twice. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That is so sweet. So I appreciate the super chat. Super chat is on and I'm grateful for that. Um, so, um, all right. So the, um, let's see, Sophie's baby. I'll check this out. Willing to try anything to feel my best self. Um, yeah, you know, this is one of those things um, uh, Chris Holt, DM me and I'll send you a specific link if you want to grab it. Um, this is, so the EGCG is the extract. Um, and one of the, um, oh my goodness, people are so crazy. Sorry, you guys. Thanks, Pat. Um, 
<sighs> so we got trollers going on on YouTube again. Um, okay, so um, I got a little distracted. Two flavonoids. Those two flavonoids are what they've deemed as a very good way of not turning off, but limiting and modulating that protein. So again, this is where I go back to potentially this is a gene factor that, you know, just like with some of the other genes that we can see genes turn things on and genes turn things off. Um, the other thing too, food. So I always go food first, right? So dark green leafy veggies, foods and plants that are rich in flavonoids naturally, like drinking lots of green tea is very powerful. Um, also, you know, we are now seeing protein powders and even protein bars that are flavored and have monk bean fruit in them or the extract go for that. Um, and you can even find out if the shell is part of what is, is in the extract or not. Um, Amina, I don't know its impact on blood pressure. So that would be again, something to test out. It doesn't have any, um, usually if there are any indicators um, they will include it on the description and, and I don't see anything, um, on that here, but it does definitely say consult for, with your medical provider or your physician. Um, okay. So that, that really, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, when people say, what is a cytokine storm? Do I have one? Have I had a storm impact my body and how do I minimize the storm? for both dealing with my autoimmunity and potentially that autoimmunity being an underlying condition for the virus that is there. Um, this particular topic is, I, I think, most important to pay attention to these flavonoids, two flavonoids that can help heal our body. And that's what I wanted to do to talk about um, or wanted to talk with you about today is to just really create awareness and education around this topic. Um, you might see headlines in this category, but I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be overwhelmingly discussed just because there's so much going on and the front line, they're just in survival mode. Um, let's see. So Pau says, I've heard you say we can support your chats. Could you let me know how I can do that? Would love to support you. Oh, okay. Um, so on, so Instagram, that's an excellent question. So on YouTube, if you participate on YouTube, they have something called super chat. And so there's always a chat box, just like with Instagram on the bottom, YouTube has a chat box. So for all of you YouTube curious, there's like a little money sign. And when people push that, it's either at the top or, oh, it's at the bottom. So in the comment box, there's like a little smiley face where you can put in emojis. And then there's like a dollar sign and it says, when you click on it, it says, show your support for natural health resources. That's where people can, if the chat, the live chat, super chat is on, which they, it's an automatic thing. They, um, people can contribute so they can make donations of any amount. Um, and it's related also to the translation, translation of like us dollars and Euro or whatever. Um, so that's how people most of the time support when I say there's a super chat, it actually pops up a color. I don't know the color coding, um, but it pops that up. And then for many of you, if you shop within my full strip store, that directly supports my, my channel. That essentially is you shopping the shelves of my clinic. Um, it, it just is online and I don't ship out those. It, it gives us access to you know, over three to 4,000 different brands and uh, a lot of different products. And we have pet products, we have skincare products, we have protein. I mean, they're all the high quality um, brands and even some I'm in negotiations with um, their, I talk a lot with their buyers. <laughs> so I'm kind of a unique uh, unicorn when it comes to a uh, full script consumer uh, on the doctor side, but they, um, there are two brands that I am introducing to them that I love and think that other people should be highlighting just as much as I love. And um, so I'm working with them on that end. But I do know that right now I try and be up to date with what they have in stock. All the immune products, they're constantly coming and going. But the good news is with full script, why I really love them for a lot of my patients, they don't have to call me to book an appointment to come and get supplements. They can just reorder online and it's an auto ship. So like if you are always taking your, you know, lipo B 
and your, you know, uh, stress management, cortisol management, you can have that constantly coming to you every month so that you never run out or like my, my lymphatic patients, they never run out of lymph stem because they have them on auto ship. And it's just automatic. It's in the system. And it helps because it tells the buyers how much they need to have on stock so that you get priority over everybody else because you've been included in the buying process. So definitely for those autoimmune or, or immune components, those are, are good. So Instagram kept me on the other side. You guys are going to cut off soon. Yep, there, it just cut off. It does it so fast. Um, so I hope that makes sense, YouTube. I really try not to be salesy. That is not my plan at all. I really want to give you guys impactful information that you can take away. This is such a great use of my time. And I feel uh, very much in communication with you all as a community. All right, bringing back Instagram. Hi, Instagram. You're back for part two. We're just finishing up our conversation about cytokine storms. What are they? The kind of 101 about cytokines and essentially how to help your body minimize the basically autoimmune reaction of your immune system. And this is very impactful and helpful for helping you overcome some of your propensity or risk factors when it comes to underlying health conditions in this virus and minimizing the impact of the virus and needing to be hospitalized or on ventilation or intubated. So uh, just a quick overview for all of you new joining um, over on Instagram. There is a protein called HMGB1 that gets turned on and basically is the trigger point for a cytokine storm. Cytokines are certain uh, immune cells that in overabundance, they start instead of attacking the invader, i.e. virus or bacteria, they end up attacking the entire body. Sometimes they'll attack certain systems. And what we see with some of these underlying health conditions as it's been reported by the CDC many of them have autoimmune relations. And so autoimmunity, diabetes, RA, Hashimoto's, uh, COPD, asthma, arterial sclerosis, uh, vascular components. So that's a very, very huge um, aspect. Um, and the good news is, is that there are two flavonoids that can be quite impactful and that you can take to modulate the actual reaction of your immune system that limits that protein that can get you out of a cytokine storm or minimize the cytokine storm that might be raging through your body. And those are mung bean seed coat extract and green tea, which is great. So we all love green tea. Um, I want to answer some questions here. So feel free to ask some questions. Um, and for Instagram, if you need anything, uh, any links, uh, two things, you can DM me directly, myself or Ella is, she's helping me kind of manage my messages. Um, we can direct DM you links, or if you guys follow me on YouTube, um, in the description box for all of you YouTube, the description box below, you click like a little arrow just under the title. Um, that box has all the links. And I try and really put as much info as I can before we go live. Um, okay, so um, does caffeine for green tea have the same effect? Okay, so green tea does have caffeine, but it does not excite the nervous system, the central nervous system like caffeine. So it's a different form of caffeine. And, um, you know, I like organic green tea, drinking it in tea form, um, the stronger, the better, like a matcha is much more potent, but in this particular, um, product, like the, uh, life extension, the cytokine suppress that actually has the extracted green tea, but it's the EGCG. So here's the key, the pretty, you know, you can drink green tea all you want but it's the extract that you want to get. And it's EGCG. That is what you will find in capsule form in the life extension product. So that link is down below that is available in our full script store. So I want to put that out there that, you know, drinking green tea is fantastic and has a lot of benefit. It's very, um, it's, it is nerve, it's a nerve tonic. And it also is very good for minimizing inflammation. Um, it kind of also is an anti-aging um, aspect to it. Would eating mung beans have the same effect? Well, no, because it's the seed 
the seed coat. So the coating of the seed is what you'd want to eat. And most people are probably not going to do that. <laughs> but I know that that's, um, you know, that extract, that's the one thing, you know, food we can eat. And there are sometimes those extracts, that's just really hard to consume those, or even get that into the body. So that's where like this fully supplement only would be my route to get this. But do, you know, mung bean is a great sugary alternative. It's great for diabetics and green tea is also good for the body. So um, if you are adrenal weak, then caffeine will not be helpful. So um, Edward Thor, again, going back to the different types of caffeine, you know, a coffee, really intense caffeine, even decaf has a different type of caffeine, like green tea and white tea. Um, those that caffeine I'm okay with. So I know a lot of times people are like, no caffeine, but there's different types of caffeine. The caffeine that drains the adrenals is going to be the coffee form. Um, and even uh, chocolate. Chocolate does have caffeine. Okay, so uh, would a liver cleanse help with all of this? A, a liver cleanse could be beneficial for your liver enzymes that might be elevated, but that the a liver cleanse will not block that protein. Um, the HMGB1 protein is what we need to address and liver cleansing all you want won't address that. But I do like liver cleansing. I think every, you know, six months, at least once a year, we should do glandular organ cleansing detoxes of some sort. Um, but again, if you consume like, you know, my kind of daily practice, I love to consume dandelion tea. Um, at least one cup a day is a very good way to kind of support your, your body. Um, all right. So a says my allergies were in high gear and your great tips help knock it out. Appreciate you. I finally ordered my REM so can sleep better. Yay. Hot flashes a bear at night. Yeah. Hot flashes can be a pain, but the, the REM sleep REM, I would pair up the REM sleep with Ephesoy and boom, you're going to be sleeping great. I can't wait to hear it. I love it when people sleep better. Um, so Futuristic says a lot of the medical information Dr. Mills provides free on YouTube, you'd be paying for at a doctor's clinic. Totally correct. I really treat these. I treat our chats just like I would if you were to come to my clinic and I really don't deviate. Um, so am I accepting online appointments? Not right now. Um, does the green tea raise blood pressure? Um, the extract that you would find in the life extension the EGCG, I, I have not seen any indication that it would, but again, check with your pharmacist or your, your medical provider. Um, yeah, and MTHFR, I definitely, I, I really do feel like there's some gene component and we are just getting into gene sciences. You guys, if you followed me, you know, you know my interest in this. Um, I went to a conference in, gosh, it seems like yesterday, it was in September in Nashville. I think it was Nashville. Yeah, Nashville. I think it was Nashville. It was, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was Nashville. Sorry. September was a blur. I even had like four trips that month. Um, but Nash, that, that conference was all about genes and turning genes on, turning genes off. And the gene genetic discoveries are epigenetics, the epidemiology around our genes. That I think is going to be where we see potentially that role of epidemiology blending into what really triggers the cytokine storm like is that a gene that you know are we more prone certain genes are turned on well the protein that is hmgb1 it gets turned on proteins and enzymes they're it's like train tracks you know gabriel's got a little train track and he's got like the little divider well our genes are like that some genes turn things on sometimes it turns them off and they go another way so that connection there is what we have to figure out and at this point these two extracts, these uh, uh, flavonoids, they're the things that turn a cytokine storm into a, a milder version of an immune reaction. Um, okay, so Misty says, what do you use the REM? Interested, I need sleep. So I don't know if I have the REM on here. Let me see. I can get that for you. Um, let, me, let me pull the link. So REM sleep. Let me add this to this video. REM sleep is, um, for all of you interested, it's my latest find, I found this a few months ago. 
This is the new alternative for me. I used to have this awesome natural sleep aid that I loved and the FDA pulled one of the ingredients because it was so effective, much better than some of the um, products that were out on the market. Um, so YouTube, it's now in the description box, so you can grab that. But it's made by Healthy Cell. This is a company that has talked about genes. The One of the leading uh, gene researchers, gene genetic scientists, uh, especially stem cell science, this is the doctor that made this. And it it comes with all these ingredients. They're basically four kind of parts, but they have herbs, they have amino acids, they have uh, cortisol reducing, lowering, temperature balancing, so for hot flashes. And then it really helps the neurotransmitters rebalance so that we can get into a peaceful, long-term sleep. Um, but this is a good way to offset some of the stress, but also to get you sleeping better. Because when you're not sleeping, you, that I mean, that sleep, the lack of sleep just sets everything up. We are more inflamed. Our cells aren't recovering. Our organs aren't relaxing and taking a break. Our liver, you know, is constantly going. I mean, talk about like a liver detox. Actually, you know, we talk about keto diets and things like that. But, you know, if you stop eating for 12 hours, you know, 7 to 7, 7 p.m., 7 a.m., and you go to bed at like nine and wake up at 637, you have a lot of time that your body's resting, your cells are rejuvenating, your organs are shut down. There's, you know, this whole kind of digestive process that happens. And then, you know, between a certain period of time at night, the, those organs and glands should be resting. And when they're not, they can wake us up. And so a lot of times it's also related to our habits as well. Um, Okay, so yes, yeah, so the REM sleep is in the description. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. I need essential oil. Oh, so the essential oil brand. Oh, let me grab that too. So the essential oil. Let me see. I have that. I have that around here. Um, let me grab it for you guys. Let's see here. Um, the essential oil brand. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So the one brand that I really love. It's called Guru Nanda, and um, they actually got they got dinged by the FDA um, because they were making some unsupported claims about the virus and some of their products. But I will tell you, their products are awesome. Okay, so let me let me pull in the blend. So this is what I I bought from them. I discovered them. Oops, let me link that for you. I send this over. Sorry, YouTube. I'm working on the spot. Okay, let me put this in the description box. Uh, Guru Nanda uh, Aromatherapy. Okay, so oh, it's in the box. It's safe. Okay, so Guru Nanda, I talked yesterday about using aromatherapy. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, please do. I talk a little bit about some habits that are healthy, but they have all these different blends. The one that I really have been called to, and this I couldn't buy online, so I just bought the whole kit. And I've purchased a few of the other ones, but this is called Immunity. This is a bad boy. Like this is a very powerful aromatherapy essential oil blend because they diffuse clove, tea tree oil, eucalyptus, frankincense, lemon, and oregano oil. It's like, is a major immune hit. Oh. I love this stuff. I diffuse this in my car. Um, you know, we've gone out like three times. I've had three, maybe four. Yeah, two at Pikes and two at Walgreens. So I've had four in the car experiences. Actually, five if you include us picking up our veggies. Which, by the way, I got garlic. I got purple garlic from one of the farms. Um, so I would diffuse that as an immune booster, and it's really, really powerful. Um, so in pauses, I discovered the stuff they have for your face. Yeah, Guru Nanda is awesome. And it is a little bit more expensive, but this is what I say with oils. High quality oils are going to be a little pricier. You're going to pay for what you get. And a lot of the fragrance that is out there, it gets billed as an essential oil and it's not. And so the fact that they have oregano oil which this is my normal oregano oil bottle. It's not big and a drop or two goes a long way, but like frankincense is an expensive oil. Um, they also have a breathe easy one in here that I really love. 
They also have a calming sleep. I have not tried the calming sleep, um, but this is a breathe easy. This has peppermint, eucalyptus, tea tree oil, basil, rosemary. Oh, so good. And then the sleep one, it has lavender, wintergreen, frankincense, very grounding. Frankincense is, oh, thanks, futuristic. Another uh, super chat. Um, futuristic, or uh, the frankincense is a grounding, like it is a root chakra. It's kind of in the red zone. It's very grounding. So if you feel like you're up here in your head, frankincense will bring that down energetically. Very, very powerful for that. It also has lemongrass and cedar wood, orange and patchouli. Okay, I have I have a story about um, cedar wood. So my signature scent, I don't do it so much now, but when I had retail, and I had my wellness spa. I used to have a facility with 14 you know, employees, staff. We had massage, we had skincare, we had acupuncture, hypnotherapy. I was in there, we had nutrition. We had all sorts of um, staff that catered to an assortment of health and wellness needs. And it was kind of like a wellness spa slash my medical center. And I found this one diffused oil and it became the signature oil. And I, it is so crazy, but it had cinnamon, cedar wood, and frankincense. That was the blend cinnamon, cedar wood, and frankincense. And it smelled fantastic. I still love it. I still use it. Uh, everything in my center, even we used to have these little, um, these little, uh, like craft bags with our logo on them. And so people would take those, you know, they put their product in it and walk away with it. Or, you know, I had a scripts and even like my notes, you know, so I'd have my notes and I'd give people notes or whatnot to take home and, you know, sheets and things like that. And everybody would say, I love the smell. Like I just love the smell. So we started selling this, the fragrance and we used to have our florist, they would come in. Okay. So our florist, who is a big florist in St. Pete, they would come in to get this fragrance because they loved it. And like you work at it, like you have flowers all over your place. And they're like, we want to diffuse the smell because it's so great. And one of the key factors is cedar wood and frankincense are very grounding. So the purpose for me, I always wanted people to have a sense like this green color, They'd have a sense when they walk in, just the color is very calming. Green is the heart chakra. So if there's any heart related chakra issues, it tunes that down. Then I'd want to ground even further with the fragrance that we had and we diffused. And we used diffusers well before. I'm trying to find the one that I was showing you guys. Uh, oh, here it is. That We had diffusers before like this. This is a Guru Nanda diffuser. Before they had this, you know, this now has a USB. This is a more recent addition. I used to have a little plug in and it was this little uh, like uh, pad that I'd put the oil in and just plug it in. I always was nervous about fire hazard, but people love that fragrance. And I noticed a difference when people would come in, they would sit, fill out their intake forms and kind of shop around and then they go back for their treatments or meet with whatever um, provider and it added to their healing. And that was really key. And I really, I'm big about colors. I'm big about setting a tone in a room because it really does have an impact. And so I've had a lot of you comment, you ask if I'm at my facility, but th this is how I set that up. Like colors are big, the, you know, textures, um, the sensations. There's always water. I don't have my feature on, but I have a huge water feature that I've had. Um, and that's really big. So aromatherapy, water, plants. I just got a really new, pretty peace lily that I'll be highlighting. This one's not love and life right there. So, um, but that's all really key. And then uh, moving your air, cleaning your air, having, you know, the salt lamp right there. That's all very important. Um, okay. So, um, Let's see. I'm not sleeping. The legs hurt. Uh, Joanne, double knee replacement. Mm. Oh, you had a double whammy with the vein removal. I hate vein removals. Oh, they're so bad. Um, I don't, Whitney, carry that blend um, anymore. I need to see how I can get that for all of you because I'm. it was so good. I used to get these huge vats, like, 
you know, these are, this is like, this is my lymph stem. This is a four ounce. I used to get, it was a 16 ounce bottle and we would go through that. It was expensive because of the, the frankincense. I mean, it was, an, it's what you want to get is unadulterated frankincense. It's really hard to find. A lot of times you just get the frankincense fragrance. Um, but, oh, it's so, so good. Okay. So anyway, I digress. That's a little snapshot into my previous life. Uh, and it was Monday through Sunday. <laughs> we were open seven days a week. <laughs> I worked all the time. It was, it was fun, but quite exhausting. Um, do I do any essential oil and colors video? Will I do? Yeah, I absolutely can. Um, you love your salt lamp and essential oil. What does it mean when I can't eat and drink till after an hour of waking up? Um, uh, well, it depends on how you're feeling, but sometimes people feel nauseous. Sometimes it's just your body kind of waking up. Um, what I would do first thing would be to try water, uh, warm water with some lemon juice and see how you do with that. Um, so what happened to my wellness spa in office? So Jenny from the block. So that was in Florida. Um, I opened up, um, I spent a year and a half writing my business plan and the economy crashed in 08. I remember as I was meeting with my business advisor through the SBA. And so I opened up, started a physical facility, uh, in the midst of an economic crisis. So I'm not new to this chaos. Um, there are better bailouts now for business owners than there were then. Um, but essentially I opened up a, a facility and it was 1700 square feet and two rooms. And then uh, about a year and a half, I needed to move to a different location, partially because of the surroundings. It was a little sketchy. We had some meth heads come in. I was like, Oh, we need to move. It was, it was not the safest of facilities, but then I moved to a, um, uh, front, front facing like, uh, anchor location and, um, had that for five, four or five years. And then I had, uh, several instances in my life happen, some major life epiphanies. And one of my, um, famous, uh, patients had told me her story of how she grew her business and she grew her business into like HSN and, um, she works with celebrities and like she's in Harrods and, and I was just huge. And she's like, it was a slingshot. I had to scale back to move forward. And I remember thinking like, okay, I need to do that. Like I'm going to need to make these changes. And to do that, I wanted to progress my career more than I was progressing other folks career and not in a bad way, but I just didn't feel like I was investing as much in some of my education and just doing what, what I wanted to do was work more with patients versus manage the operation. And, you know, an operation like what I had, it was, you know, every holiday is a big holiday because it was, we did some massage and skincare and it was a lot. So, um, and I also knew I wanted space for relationships and the family and, and I needed to create that space. So I did that took a little bit of time. It took me six months to figure out how to do that. And the worst part was how to downsize my staff. Um, and then I found a cute little place where it was just two rooms. It was me. And um, that is what opened up space for me to start YouTube. And even then, like I balked, I had a patient tell me, gosh, it was like five months. She kept hounding me. She'd come in every week. Have you thought about it? I mean, you need to open up a YouTube channel. So I did. And then I would shoot, basically, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue because <laughs> I had written websites and done like all the marketing. I've never had to invest in uh, marketing resource. Like I've never paid for advertising or marketing or anything like that. So it was always word of mouth and people just kind of found out. I did a lot of networking in Florida um, and I had a lot of people help me grow my business through that. And so she said, you should do YouTube and so I did a few videos here and there. And, and basically if somebody canceled or I had a you know hour block in between, because at that point I scaled down my practice and I was working limited hours. And so when I come in, I'd see patients and then I'd go, go home or do whatever. Um, whereas before I was working Monday through Sunday. And a lot of times if somebody called out on a Sunday, I'd have to go in and cover the front. And it was, it was a lot. Um, but so I planned on just to kind of having time in between appointments 
to do some YouTube videos. And that's what I did. And then uh, Brian and I, you know, got together and then we ended up having Gabriel. And that was when I started to assess the important need for me to be, to implement my plan that I had originally thought about way back in like 2013 when I made the big change was that I needed to, I wanted to be one to many. And I was one to many when I used to talk. I used to have a teaching, a talking, teaching uh, kind of circuit. And I love that, but I needed to figure out how could I make that work as a business. And so I had, I see, I still have them. I think in bigger, like the way I do my thoughts, it's like a data dump. And I get these big like post-it note sheets. I mean, they're huge. And I just put them all up on the walls and then I just start marking ideas. And then I start bringing it all and it starts to make sense. And so I'll be drawing things. And I still have those from back then. And everything that I put out, like, you know, digital online webinars, you know, virtual appointments, teaching like with some of the bigger brands and all the stuff it's I've manifested that and I'm a big believer that what we have here like yesterday you know what we think are and and our thoughts we write it down we can manifest it we have to focus on it like you can't see right up here I have smaller versions of the white posting notes with all my ideas <laughs> so every day I'm looking at these ideas I have my to-dos and all that so that allowed space the time that I took off so I didn't have to come in and manage I could actually implement and plan for my business and then when I had Gabriel became even more uh of a necessity so I thought I'd bounce back really quickly from uh, maternity leave and I didn't it was really challenging I had a really hard time figuring out how to balance I still do I'm not really good at that I'm an all or nothing and it's really hard to be all or nothing mommy and then switch like modes into work mode and I've gotten better but it's still I'm not one of those people that can do it all at the same time very well for some reason. Um, but yeah, so the vision board, definitely uh, Jenny was a big factor. And then, um, yeah, with our move, the big thing was we moved. So, you know, I, I got this whole thing. I started to learn a little bit more about YouTube. I started putting out more YouTube content and I said, okay, I want to make this something that we do. We actually wanted to do a podcast first and then uh, Brian's company uh, came to him and they had done that the year before and he's like, we're not moving. And then he said, I think we're gonna have to move. And so we kind of articulated like what it would, what, what we would need to move. Cause if we did, I would leave everything I had built to move to a whole new city and start over. And I just didn't have, I knew I didn't have the energy or the bandwidth time-wise to do what I had done before and in investing and in opening up what I had opened. And I didn't even know if I wanted to do that, you know, and Atlanta is a big area and we weren't going to be living in the city. So it just, everything kind of moved into the digital space. And so that's really what has happened. I do have a, a facility that I operate out of, but I am not the owner of it and I'm not managing it. And like right now I know Michael, the owner is trying to figure out how things are going to work with, everything that's going on. And I don't, I don't have to deal with that. So, um, I really, I'm grateful. I have learned a lot of lessons. <laughs> I've made tons of mistakes. Uh, I still make mistakes all the time, but you know, it's how we move forward and learn from them and grow. And, uh, you know, everything's caught up where the digital space is a lot easier. Like I remember we used to set up this little thing. Like I had, I did have a YouTube channel before, and it's still there. It sucks. Like it's awful. And I've got to figure out something to do with that. But um, yeah, it it's still mind blowing to be in this kind of space. It's just me. And I sit and talk with all of you and there's hundreds of you on here. And actually throughout our time together, there's about three to 4,000 that watch these live shows every day. And so um, it's quite amazing. So hi, Sadie. Um, but yeah, so thanks Ace Cats and Sandra uh, and Gloria um, and I think George had said something. Um, but yeah, I really, I really appreciate it. So um, your support is huge in terms of helping me, you know, get the word out there. And, you know, despite YouTube censorship and all of that, we're still getting the word out there. And um, we will all get through this together. 
Uh, this is just a fleeting moment in our lifespan. It seems like a lot, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. And that is what I know I've, 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 we all have lived through the economic crisis of before and many of you even before then, um, everything will be okay. And so it might be a setback, but you know, the biggest thing that we have control over is our attitude and our thoughts and our daily actions that support ourselves and keeps our families healthy and giving, um, to, to others that help support them. And so that's really my mission here is to help you all be healthy, safe, and well during this time. And we'll all be on the other side of this celebrating. And, you know, maybe then we'll have an actual in-person meetup. <laughs> so I can have a conference and you guys all come and we all, you know, spend time together and learn and be educated, not just by myself, but other people. Um, but, you know, there's a time and place for all of that. And so the time now is for us to be at home, to stay safe, to get your mask, wear your mask. My dream, that dream last night, I was so upset. I woke up and I was really upset. And meanwhile, Gabriel had had a nightmare and he was crying, holding <laughs> for a little kiddo. This was really early this morning, but he was, he was, he was sitting up and crying in bed, holding that big giant hamster that I got him because he wants a hamster in bed with him. The ham I mean, seriously, the hamster is like this big. It's, it's Instagram. You can't even see it on the screen. It's huge. Um, so fun times, but, uh, it's, I just, I really appreciate all of you tuning in and supporting, you know, supporting us and, uh, the live chats this morning have been really, I I'm grateful for that. So, um, Joanne says, so cool. You always put a smile on my face and I love to hear stories about you and why you do what you do. Thank you. Big hugs. Aw. And thanks, Jenny. Thanks for asking. Um, do I have a supplement for circulation in my store? Um, yes, I actually do a lot of them. And in fact, they're category. So the, if you guys go into full script, um, and you can do that through my website. So naturalhealthresources.com. And if you, there, there's a shop scroll down, there are several different ways to get in. We just need your name and your email because it's all online. But once you're in, that's your access point. Um, once you're in, you can shop everything. Like I have favorites. So I have some of my favorite categories, like my adrenal health, stress, you know, cardiovascular, you can shop all those favorites and then you can shop by category. It's very easy once you're in and you can find things even beyond what I recommend. And I see a lot of folks end up putting other things into their shopping cart. It's all 10% off. So that is uh, an automatic discount that I give to everybody who comes into the store and you don't have to have a code. Um, so Rojo coffee raises my blood pressure is decaf. Okay. Uh, decaf actually uh, is less caffeine, but still can be a caffeine hit. Um, and sometimes I have folks who will run it twice, you know, so like I have a little mini coffee thing and it's just a one pot wonder. <laughs> So Brian loves this stupid Starbucks frappuccinos. I like it full on like high octane caffeine, like the Cuban or Colombian coffee. That's, I love that stuff. Um, but yeah, so I, you could run it through again. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to pray for little Gabriel. He's, he's so sweet. Diana, I need grounding, making the blend to diffuse in the office. Sounds so good. Yeah. And the grounding, like frankincense is the best grounding and red, red sheets, red undies. I know it sounds crazy, but like red is a very grounding root chakra. So that grounding color is very, very powerful. Um, and a lot of times we get disconnected from the grounding and also going outside, putting your bare feet in dirt or walking on grass is very, um, palace says, I have to get you some Colombian coffee. Oh yes. My friend, her uh, ex-husband is Colombian. And when they went to Colombia, she brought me back you can't, you can't even get that stuff here. It is so good. Uh, so yeah, please do. I will pay you for it. <laughs> All right, friends. So I've kept uh, you up uh, in, on this for over an hour and a half. So I'm grateful for your time. So tomorrow we will definitely have more uh, chats, more information to share. Uh, but it is crazy. We are over 2 million cases worldwide and, and growing. And the U.S. is just we are going to have to get more testing faster. Um, so that's what plagues us. But until then, we will continue to stay safe, stay in our homes, get your masks, 
And um, I will keep perusing the companies that I know that have um, the hand sanitizers and stuff um, to get that out to you guys as well. So stay, um, if you guys, on Instagram, I'll definitely post. On YouTube, look for my community tab. That's where I'm going to post um, items that will be helpful for you kind of in the immediate um, and some of those you have to like get in, get in fast, um, or some, some of the supplies are, are going out, but, um, yeah. So check out the description links down below and I will see you guys, uh, social distancing experts. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 9am. Thanks for tuning in everybody. I'm grateful for your time by Instagram. All right, YouTube. Thanks so much for tuning in and thanks Jenny for asking such a personal question. I'm happy to answer. So any other questions you guys want to ask? You know, I'll definitely answer them tomorrow. All right, you guys have a great day. Be safe, be well. And I hope you guys are having great sun shine outside and get out and breathe in, get some grounding going and uh, experience nature. Bye, everybody.